Okay, we're in Hebrews 4, and good morning, and for those that are going to hear this via the internet after we put it up, I pray that the word of God blesses you today. You know, the most talked about verse in this chapter is verse 12, and I, I said some of it prior to hitting the recording button, but we're to labor to come into God's rest. And God's rest, his comfort to all of us is the word of God. And, and I, I pray that brothers and sisters everywhere, which is whenever anxiety, whenever things bother you, just take a break from the world and, and be still and know that God is God. And that he's given us a wonderful instruction book that would help us in our spiritual walk with him. It's not about us. It's all about him. And, and God saved us. All we had to do was believe in what Jesus did at the cross. That was his plan. So he says, let us therefore, it says, let us therefore fear less a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. In other words, he's given us freely the word of God. He's given us the truth, the way, and the life. He's given us his counsel. And it's not like we were talking last night in War on the Saints. It's not an audible voice. It's just hearing God's word. For unto us was the gospel preached. How beautiful is that? You know, because we, we all came from the same place. Once we were lost, now we're saved. So for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word, the word, once again, the word preached, did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. And then that heard it because they didn't believe in Jesus Christ, so they weren't going to believe in the word. See, it's, it all starts to get the first base to hit the home run. You got to you got to receive Christ. You got to say, Lord, help me. You know, that's where I was when I cried out to God. I thought who I was and I was nobody. And then when I I got jammed up in the things of the world. I needed salvation. I needed to know. Didn't know him, but I needed to know there was something better than what I was doing in my life. And and God. God helped me. You know, many people had witnessed to me prior to God helping me so that that seed, that word of God was planted. And we're all supposed to be planting seed. We're all supposed to be speaking God's word to people. And it said, for unto us was the gospel preached. Verse 3, for we which have believed do enter into rest. In other words, once you begin to believe, you begin to enter into the rest, the comfort of God's word, because you begin by reading. And as we all know, some start with the milk, just like the baby. You know, and I, I get such a charge over even the pictures I get every week when my wife goes down to see the grandbaby. As I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. And that's all, that's a whole, a whole lot to grab right there. You know, I'll hit it when we're in the commentary. For he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day on this, uh, on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And that goes all the way back into Genesis when we realized that it was God and it was us, not us, us, but them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that decided to do what they were going to do. And it was laid in the, the foundation of all creation. And in this place, again, if they shall enter into my rest. You know, it, well, as I got a little older, I realized the most important thing in my own life was being comforted by God. 
you know, he, he never came and spoke to me, spoke to me. He just gave me that little mustard seed of faith that almost like Steve always says with the demoniac, no matter how bad a person is, is bound up, the fervent prayer of the righteous can untie that chain. And, and nothing, the Bible says nothing will be impossible. It's, it's how serious you take the word of God. It's where you go with your spiritual life. Because with God, nothing's impossible. You know, with man, it's impossible. And I always reflect on that because, you know, when I was younger, I, I, I tried to say, well, how do you get through this, Lord? And he said, just believe. Believe in me. And I, I sat there that day on my knees and I said, you know, I don't know you. I was crying and I said, but I need to know you. And I didn't even know what I was saying. I read it in, in the Psalms where David said, teach me your ways, Lord. Because our ways and his ways are two different ways. And then this, this whole thing, when I was studying last night, remember, yesterday's read, I talked about the evil heart of unbelief. Well, the subtitle right after I read this about and in his place again, if they shall enter into my rest, that's God's rest. What does he say here? The subtitle in the Thomas Nelson again is reminding us, hearken not your heart, are not your hearts. And I say this to people all the time. It's a heart thing, people. It's where Amen. your heart is with God. Amen. You know, and people... It's, it's not about what you're doing. It's about where your faith and your heart is and the simplicity that's in Christ is he's your savior. He's my savior. And all we got to do is believe that. He died for everyone's sins. And no, none of us can really relate to that because we want to be important. And, and, and the thing that's important is faith in Christ, what he did for everybody. And nobody wants to believe that God could do something like that. And that's the, the simplicity of the gospel that he was crucified and resurrected so that we could have faith and we could live eternally with him. That he's going to resurrect us because we believe in what he did. And that's the simplicity of the early church. That's the simplicity of putting a smile on your face as you tell people, if you die right now, where are you going? And a lot of them don't know where they're going, especially the religious group, because they're bound by every doctrine and everything they hear instead of them reading the Bible themselves and getting to know who Jesus Christ is. You know, my simplicity is he didn't die to save me, to lose me. You know, otherwise he didn't have to reveal himself. But God reveals himself when you diligently seek him, when you're, you're crying out to God. And, and, and God's a God of love. He's not a mean God. He's a God that wants to embrace us. And how does he embrace us? He embraces us with the word of God. You know, when Jesus was speaking to the people, he said, my sheep hear my voice and know me. And, you know, God's in control of everything. When you get beyond the fact that God created everything, you can zone in to who Jesus Christ is. He's Lord of Lords, King of Kings. That's all you got to believe. When, when he said, without me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The only way you're going to be with him is to sit at his feet and listen to the word of God. Nowhere is it in an audible voice unless you were there with him or like Paul was sitting there on the road and he got the vision of visions. I mean, you talk about being crazy. Put yourself in that position. You know, killing people, prisoning people, and then having this vision Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? 
boy, you would change immediately. I'm sorry, Lord, whatever you want me to do. You know, there's so many things. But he says, seeing therefore it remained that some must enter therein, that to whom it was first preached entered not. Why didn't they enter? Because of their unbelief. I've talked to so many people about the simplicity of Christ over the years. God's a spirit, people. And we have to worship him in spirit and truth. And don't think God don't know the heart. The illustrations of Christ was he, he knew they were what they were saying and thinking before they opened their mouths. The Bible in Isaiah tells us the same thing before we even pray. He's already answered sometimes. The least we could do is worship him in spirit and truth. I just love the fact that it goes, it goes on here this morning in this teaching. He says, again, he limited in a certain day saying in David, and that's why I said earlier, we got to go back to the Psalms today. Today, after so long a time, as he said, today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. Well, that's God's word. When you really start to understand this, don't harden your heart, but receive the word of God. Martha, Martha, why are you so anxious? And, and, and he turned around. He said, Mary's doing the right thing. She's sitting at my feet. Jesus was there live and in color in his ministry. And Mary was listening to the word of God. That's how simple it is. But if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also had ceased from his own works as God did from his. And in verse 11 tells us, right before the, the verse that everybody knows, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Now, now I'm going to hit, hit the nail with the hammer. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I know we all want to please God. How do you please God? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Well, what are we holding in our laps? We're, and, you know, the world's being deceived right now. And it's a lot more than three quarters of the world, people. I, I use that frame thought because that's what I, I got in the beginning until I started studying the word of God. And I started seeing what a mess the body of Christ is in even today. And then furthermore, what a mess the whole world's in right now. Boy, you don't think we need Jesus? We don't need this instruction book? But how many people really dig in? How many people really believe? How many people's hearts have been hardened? And then it goes to the, the prophetic word here that everybody knows it's quoted by everybody. I've been watching John Gogan for 29 years get up on the pulpit and quote Hebrews 4.12. Even movie actors, Charlton Heston and all of them can quote scripture. The devil can quote scripture people. My sheep are those that hear the word and do it. That's why how important it is to believe in Jesus Christ. Because we all fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us. We, we, we studied last night together as a, a family. And Steve was in the Wii mode. And he confessed it this morning. It happens to all of us. Some people confess when they catch the enemy and some people like they're embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed because he's faithful and just. He forgives us our sins because God's got an attitude against sin. And when we confess 
That means we're in relationship with Jesus Christ. It, it's so wonderful, the fact that we all have the word of God. And anybody that has this book in their house is going to be accountable to whether they're going to read it or not. And if you don't read it, you'll get chastised. If you read it, it'll comfort you. It, it's like it'll get you out of a lot of problems, you know. You don't continue in sin. Sin is rebellion to God's word. The more you read the Bible, the more godly sorrow comes in, and it leads you to repentance. And it's the same game for everybody, people. I, I, because we have a great high priest. Listen, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and he said and is now here you want to be a discerner it says the word of god is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so what's going to get you out of a hardened heart right now the word of god he'll help you all you got to do is read it and believe and yet so many people. That's why the word of God is clean. That's why it's a double-edged sword. That's why iron sharpens iron, because none of us got it all going on. We all need each other. We need to learn to love each other right where we're at. Because God used a donkey with Balaam. I tell that to people all the time. None of us are perfect. But we're made perfect. Is in. His righteousness was imputed unto us if we would just believe he did what he did at Calvary. That means you're saved. And as many times as you read your Bible, you look at the word grace, you look at the word saved, because that's something for years. You know, I have been going back and forth with so many Christians. They, they can't have the simplicity that's in Christ. And their intellect gets in the way. And because their intellect gets in the way, they're not doing the miracles we're reading about in this book. Because of your unbelief. What's your unbelief? You're not believing the word of God. I mean, it's, it's pretty strong when you read it verse by verse today. Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight, but all things are what? Naked and opened under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Remember something. He's your Lord and Savior. He's the one that's going to greet you when you absent from the body and you're present in front of him. It goes beyond just like we're friends and where that he is Lord. And I, it's very intimate when you really start getting into the word of God. Or as the Thomas Nelson says today, he is our great high priest. Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight. His sight, capital H. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. In other words, the hidden stuff, he knows all things. He's omnipresent. We can't even. And you talk about getting convicted. When you get to that level of a relationship with the creator, our Lord Jesus Christ, that's when reverence Reverencing the word of God and the fear of the Lord is good. It begins to operate and the devil can't have his way anymore. That's when you begin to tread and, and, and tread on serpents and scorpions because you take the thoughts captive to what the word of God says. Because in, in, in Hebrews 4.12, once again, he's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And as you get cleaned up, the things you used to do, the devil can't plague you with that anymore because you stop. The sin nature starts to slow down when you resist the devil. You're going to understand this. The devil will flee. If you, if you refuse 
to be part of what the devil's trying to do, that temptation. You know, when Jesus was tempted, he was tempted by the God of this world, the devil. And he said, you have nothing in me. Well, we can't say that, but we have Christ in us. And if we're in the word of God, we have the instruction book. And he comforts us. He says, my sheep hear my voice and follow me. That's why it's so important just to sit down quietly sometimes and read your Bible. You know, I, I do this all the time because I covet the word of God, brothers and sisters. Seeing that we have a great what? High priest that is passed into the heavens. That high priest, his name is Jesus, the son of God. Let us all hold fast our profession. In other words, what we're confessing. Remember, we have an enemy. The, the enemy has blinded the eyes of all these people that are under his control. As I said earlier, there's only 14% of people in the world that even believe the Bible is the word of God. It used to be 17%. And these are all, just like anything else, these are all holes and stuff that are being taken, and they question people. A lot of people think, and you know, what's his name? Uh, Way of the Master. They interview people all the time on the street to see what their faith is all about, what they believe in. And then you got every kind of faith system from Islam to Jehovah Witness to all these different conglomerates of religious people. But Jesus is a living Lord. He's not a religion. He's God. You got to get beyond, beyond all this. Satan uses all this other stuff to deceive people. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. When you really get into reading the Bible and following the Bible, you're going to see the glory of God. You're going to see the blessings of God in your life. And even, even Paul was buffeted by the devil, people. I think we get buffeted sometimes to keep our pride from going all the way over the top. You know, I, I like to claim God's glory all the time in my life. It's not fun when you're sitting there and I have my you all need Jesus shirt on when I went to the VA yesterday. And, you know, I was going over meds with my own doctor and she's a believer. And she says, you got to keep taking the eloquence because you're in and out of AFib. And then yesterday they drew more blood on me to see where all my blood stats and I'll know next week. It's the same thing with my loud voice sometimes because of, you know, being a veteran, I said to her, well, sometimes I raise my voice and I don't understand that I'm raised my voice. So she put me in for audiology. I got to make the appointment and have my hearing checked. Well, you know, when you get older, you start losing some of your function because this, this flesh that we all like to look at ourselves in the mirror is getting, it's decaying, it's corruptible. You know, thank God he's going to give us a new body down the road. You know, we'll never be the same because of what Jesus did and because of our faith to trust in him. And, and I look at this. We have a great high priest. Let us hold to that confession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with feelings of our infirmity. Remember, he just suffered to save us. But it says here, we have not a high priest we cannot be touched, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted because he became flesh like as we are, yet without sin. There's only one. I play that song every now and then. And his name is Jesus. He was the only one that was perfect. So we all got to get over who we are right now because we're sinners saved by grace. And when we 
we want to beat someone else up, we need to look in the mirror. Agape love is agape love. It's unconditional, people. It's what Jesus Christ did for all of us. And then what does it say at the end here today? Because our infirmities can be equated as our weaknesses, the things we fall short with walking with God sometimes. You know, when we lose it, supposedly. And everybody has a Kodak moment. Trust me. But it closes in the 16th verse today. And it says, let us, that's all of us, therefore come boldly unto what? It's a throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace. Find grace to help in time of need. So even the mercy, the grace that comes when we're in trouble, we're to come boldly before the throne and worship him because he's the grace giver. God's the grace giver. And when you, when you really look at it all, he gave us his only begotten son that all we got to do is believe in Jesus and we have everlasting life. I, I say that all the time because once you believe, it's a done deal. Because you're still going to, the, the devil's raging against all of us. They don't want us talking to people about Jesus. And people are comfortable in their helplessness. Because they're not crying out to God. His rest. I want to talk about that right now. Hebrews 4. The three different rests. I started out in the Williams before I was talking about that. God's Sabbath rest after creation was back in Genesis chapter 2. Israel's rest of victory in Canaan was in Joshua. The believer's rest is our faith today in Christ Jesus. Israel was delivered from Egypt, but a whole generation failed to enter into Canaan and claim their promised inheritance. Why? Because of their unbelief. Let us have fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, people. Reverence God every day in your lives. In God's sight, because God can see, back to what I always preach to everybody, and I preach it to Pastor Thier, too. God knows your heart. He knows my heart. It's not about everything we do. It's about our the condition of our inner being with Jesus Christ. In all your ways, acknowledge him. How many Christians fall short right there? God sees the heart, he uses his sword, the word of God, to, so we can see our true spiritual condition. Jeremiah 17, 9. Spend time daily reading the word and meditating on it. Anybody that knows me and has been in this prayer group for many, many years, that's all I ever say. Read your Bibles. I can't make you read your Bible. It's kind of like Jesus when he went out in the wilderness and he fasted. He was driven in by the Spirit. Well, the Spirit of God has got to take over in your life at some point. And you're going to diligently seek him. And he's going to reward you the same way I've been rewarded. No, I'm not rich, but I'm blessed. Because... God is in control of everything. When you start to believe that, he opens doors that no man can shut, no demon can shut. And if you get up to serve God, he'll bless you, period. Because his eyes and his ears see and hear everything. We don't understand it. We got to believe it. I don't know what Steve is praying and Cecilia is praying and Shar or Madonna, or Margaret, or Lori Daly. But God knows everything. If you understand what I'm saying, there's, man, I, I, 
I have a lot of friends that are that go go to different kinds of churches and everything else. But the common denominator in all of it is Jesus Christ. And it's very important, the heart people. And the word of God is the discerner of thoughts. So, man, there's so much you can learn just by being quiet, reading your Bible and meditating on it. One day you will give an account to God of what you've done with his word. So practice your faith. Practice your, your relationship with the God that loved you and saved you. You cannot claim your inheritance in your own power or wisdom, but you can have Jesus as your great high priest who can carry you and give you mercy and grace. And that's all you need when you need them. And he lives, he intercedes for all of us at the right hand of his father. That's why we give him the title, the great high priest. And there, there's still what we call in Christianity upon the throne of grace is for the unsaved. God's throne is the throne of judgment. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. But to God's children, it is a throne of grace. When you are tempted, you can come to the great high priest for mercy and grace. We do that every day here. We're asking God to save souls, to give us an extension. Remember, God the Father, no one knows the time and the hour, but God the Father. Even Jesus said that. He declared it in the word of God to all of us that read the Bible. If you sin... You can come to your advocate for forgiveness. And we all know that scripture. First John 1, 9. Because God's heart and God's ways are open to all those that have cried out to him. When he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Let me go over to Thomas Nelson now. Rest involves more than more inactivity. It follows the satisfactory completion of a task. Salvation rest is the gift to the believer resulting, and boy, do I, I plow this one all the time. Ask anybody that's ever sat around me at MOS. The simplest of words, it is finished. And, you know, that's when God was going back to his father and he, he was giving up the ghost. And the, the last part of it all was when he resurrected. It was, salvation was complete at that point. And at that point, Jesus Christ, as the high priest, his priestly ministry is far superior to any other priest because of the intercession he provides. The earthly high priest, with fear once a year, gained access to the mercy seat in the Holy of Holies. Christ not only has access, but is seated in the very presence of God, the Father. Yet prior to this position, he partook of man's nature and temptations so that he might sympathize, yet without sin, to imagine that since Jesus could not sin, he could not suffer, misses the point of the passage. Temptation can be reality apart from sin. God cannot be tempted with evil, yet God is tried, tempted by man, yet beyond the statements of this passage, and we all know this, he who was God, through, though made like man, could not sin. He was impeccable. And indeed, he need not sin to be human before Adam sinned. And he was completely human. The glorified saint will never again be able to sin, yet he remained human. Temptation is greatest in duration and intensity 
when one does not accept the easy way out by sinning. And Christ was, was great since he had no alternative in his humanity but to endure it. And I always, I always just turn around and I point at that stage at our church, you know, with the one and done. When Christ said it was finished, it was done. God's plan for man was made real right then and there. And, and, and he blotted out the handwriting on the wall that was against everybody. And that's the simplicity of Christ Jesus. That's glorifying God in spirit, in truth. And anybody else want to add to it? This is what I have for everybody in this. It's, it's one of those chapters. If I went in back over to Williams right now, I'd be talking probably for another five or six minutes because sometimes you have a go-to. And uh, the great Sabbath rest of this chapter remains that is now provided for the people of God. For the Hebrew people is not heaven nor the millennium as it's popularly understood, but is the great redemption rest of Luke chapter 7, verse 50. This is the argument. Those Hebrews were urged to give all diligence, in other words, labor, to come into that rest. The rest intended the real conversion, the new birth, conscious salvation and peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, as spoken in Romans 3 and Romans 8. Just as their forefathers did not, through unbelief, enter into God's pain and rest, so these Hebrews were warned that they would surely perish if they did not enter into God's redemption rest in Christ. To accept Jesus as the promised Messiah did not necessarily mean the great moral change of the new birth typified by the passage of Jordan, and it not followed faith in Christ. Christ was the atoning Savior. And it goes on, because he had to finish. God rested in finishing creation. And I, I, I want to go, I, before I forget, where's my Bible? I wanted to go, I marked it this morning. I was studying in the Psalms, because everything foreknown was spoken to in David's time. And I, I want to close today with this read out of Psalm 95. It's 11 verses. Because this is why when I, I, I started this prayer group and started reading my Bible and everything else and, and learning about the Word of God, and how alive it can be for all of us that embrace it. Sing praises to the Lord, Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with the Psalms. For the Lord is great. He's a great God, a great king above all gods. There is no other. There's none like him. And, and in his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his. And he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. This is the one that we call our Lord and Savior. And he says, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Boy, we all need to hear this word more than once every once in a while. We need to hear the word of God every day. For he is our God and we are his people, the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. That's how important the word of God is, brothers and sisters. And harden not your heart. It's even in this little chapter here today. Harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the days of the temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tempted me. This is God speaking, brothers and sisters. Prove me and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation. 
and said it is a people that do err in their heart. Once again, that's why the heart's important, you know. I learned this a long time ago, that if you believe in your heart and confess with your lips, thou shalt be saved. And then the rest of the journey is getting to know them because you're going to be with them for eternity. That's why you're sanctified through the word of God. Faith comes by hearing God's word. The more you read it, the closer you're going to draw to God. It's spiritual. What a great God. You know, how great is our God? I played that song by Moen this morning. You know, God, God don't make mistakes. And he said it here. He said, I grieve with this generation. It is a people that do err in their heart. And they have not known my ways. Well, what's our excuse? It's a lot of. A lot of Bibles collecting dust in people's houses. I had a guy come to church last week, recommitted his life to Jesus Christ. And I said, do you have a Bible? He said, well, it's somewhere. How could you not know where your Bible is? Unto him I swear in my wrath that he shall not enter my rest. So you know what separates us from God, brothers and sisters? Unbelief. It's the same thing as that he said to his disciples. And they were his disciples. They said, Lord, Lord, why couldn't we cast this devil out of this boy? And he said, because of your unbelief and doubt. And if you had the the faith, the grain of a mustard seed. And this goeth only by prayer and fasting. How many times you got to hear the scriptures? You know, go, go listen to the, the war on the saints. If you haven't listened to it enough, go listen to what Steve was teaching that I finally put up. And I thank God that the Holy Spirit led me and I found where that mistake was made by Charlie. Remember, Gerald taught me how to do this stuff, and I still make mistakes, but I own them. If you make a mistake, you own it. You confess it, and you move on. God, God is wonderful. You know, he loves us. And whoever's listening to this little message of Hebrews 4 this morning, I pray that you would just ask God to show you. And watch what God will do in your life. Take that leap of faith, as I call it, and just ask him to teach you. Give your heart, your eyes, your time. Just give him a little bit of time in your life. Meditate on the word of God. Read the gospels. Get into fellowship. Find the local church where the gospel's being preached. I say it to all these people I know that come here and they're in deliverance, but yet a lot of them don't go to churches. God didn't take the church out of the world yet, people. You need to find a place where you can fellowship, confess your faults to one another, pray for one another. You know, I had my doctor praying with me yesterday. You know, and I wasn't happy. I wanted her to tell me we could start weaning off another drug. And she said, not yet. And then she said, before I wean you down on the other one, I'm doing more blood work. Let's see where your blood is. And you know what? It's, it's kind of funny that we're saved because it is shed blood. And, you know, when you, when you look at that Hebrews 12 in clothing, in closing, it says, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder. In other words, the living of soul and spirit of the joints and marrow. And that's where our blood is made. And yet God made our bodies so good that they can even detect what's going on because of what's in our blood. And you know what? We're saved because God shed his blood to 
to save us. You know how powerful that is? And that, that's the requirement. They didn't, they didn't have Bibles in the early church. Most people didn't know how to read, but faith came by hearing. And, and God is merciful to people. I was talking to Brother Steve about that too yesterday, about how wonderful it is for the feet that bring good news, that you could go into nursing homes. You know, now that COVID is slowed down, we don't even know if COVID slowed down because now it's, it's hitting hard all over the country again. Not that it's killing people, people are getting sick. And, and you know, how happy are the feet that bring good news to someone that's laying in a nursing home? I just go back to the gospel. When I was sick, you visited me. He was, he was talking to all of us there. And we visit people that are housebound. We visit people that have no hope sometimes. And you'll find that just being kind to someone, you can get their ear and you can comfort them with God's word. People. So that's my, my role on Hebrews 4 this morning. God bless everybody.